Hey girl, let's talk crime. I wanna say thank you to the person who requested this on Facebook. I could not find the comment, but thank you for requesting. So tonight we are gonna talk about the disappearance of 12 year old Jalik Rainwalker. Jalik, who was born in August 1995, had a really, really difficult start. He was born addicted to crack cocaine and was diagnosed with reactive attachment disorder, which meant that he could not make emotional bonds with those around him, likely because he was emotionally neglected or abused as a young child. He was born to his drug-addicted mother in Albany, New York, and he was taken by the state of New York just two days later. So Jalik would ultimately bounce around between six different foster care homes. And because he was special needs, he was in what was called the therapeutic foster care home, which meant that these foster care parents had to be specially trained to be able to uh, handle his behaviors. And they also knew exactly what type of behaviors he came with. So in his sixth foster care. He was there from 1998 to 2002, and this family was set on adopting Jalik until he had attacked their young daughter, and because this was such an overwhelming situation, they did not believe that it was safe for him to remain in the home. So Jalik was a very kind child. He was very intelligent. However, he was also really angry and he had a lot of emotional outbursts and that was really hard to deal with. So in 2002, after he was given up from the sixth uh, foster home, another set of foster care parents, Stephen and Jocelyn would take him in. So Stephen and Jocelyn had three biological sons as well as another adopted daughter and she was special needs as well. However, Jalik's prior foster family that was going to adopt him did not feel that this was a really good fit. It was in Royal Washington County, New York. It was a two bedroom cabin. There was no running water, no electricity. The bathrooms were outhouses and everyone slept in one room together and they just did not think that it was going to be a good fit for Jalik. However, in 2004, they did officially adopt Jalik and along with Jalik and the other adopted daughter who were also special needs, they received $1,500 each from the state of New York. So in 2007, Jalik had ended up threatening another student in their little homeschooling circle and Jocelyn and Steven became concerned. So after this incident, Steven and Jocelyn felt like Jalik could harm one of their children and it actually called the Department of Family Services wanting to reverse the adoption. They wanted Jalik removed from their home and they were informed that that was not possible. However, there was something called respite care where it is basically a break for both the caregiver as well as the child. So on October 24th, 2007, he went into respite care, which he had went with a former foster family. So he was familiar and he stayed for a week. They had set up another week that would begin on November 2nd, 2007, which meant that Stephen and Jocelyn had to take Jalik home for one night. They did not feel comfortable doing that. And so Stephen took Jalik to his dad's home, which was nearby. So the last confirmed sighting of Jalik was around 8 p.m. that night where he and Stephen were eating dinner at a local restaurant. So according to Stephen, they went home after eating and they both went to bed pretty early. The following morning, he wakes up around 7.30 a.m., glances over and notices that Jalik is not in his bed. So there's been a few different articles that said different things. But one of the articles did state that he had taken a shower and then went to town to run an errand. And then when he came back, he then reported Jalik missing. So he still did not report Jalik missing till almost 9 a.m. And apparently at 7.30 was the time that he realized he was missing. So whatever he was doing in that hour and a half, so according to Steven, he believes that Jalik had ran away. His duffel bag was gone as well as his favorite stuffed animal. And he found a note that stated, Dear everybody, I'm sorry for everything. I won't be a bother anymore. Goodbye, Jalik. 
However, it was stated by the family that kept him for the respite care that he had actually written that note while in their care because he wanted to apologize to his family for his behavior and had insisted that this was not a runaway note at all. So the police do come out to search. There's no evidence of anything of where Jalik could have gone. However, they do find the duffel bag that Stephen said he left with, as well as the stuffed animal. It was tucked away in a corner of the garage. Stephen and Jocelyn also suggested that Jalik was suicidal because of all of his issues that he was going through and also said that he could have also ran away with a gang. In 2008, Stephen was officially a person of interest. They did give Jocelyn a polygraph test in which it came back inconclusive. Stephen refused to take one. They also did get his cell phone records for November 1st, and it did ping by the Hudson River and not anywhere near the home that he said that he was sleeping at. There was also surveillance footage of what they believed to be his van driving down a road uh, that he said he did not take. However, the photo was too grainy, the video was too grainy, so they couldn't confirm if it was in fact his van or if even Steven was driving. Four months after Jalik went missing, both Jocelyn as well as Steven and their children packed up and moved to Vermont. According to authorities, they have not cooperated anymore with the investigation and have not called to check on the status of the investigation. So when they moved to Vermont, they still owned their cabin in New York and Barbara, which is Jocelyn's mother, had actually broken in one night to look for clues as to where Jalit could be. She did find a yellow fleece sweater that Stephen said he was last seen in and took it to the police. However, she was still charged with burglary. Today, Jalik would be 26 years old and police have not ruled out suicide or that he ran away and his case does remain unsolved.